The following is an interview with Maurice Navon, who teaches ethics and artificial intelligence at Ben Gurion University. He wrote his doctoral dissertation at Bar Ilan University entitled The Moral Status of AI, which seeks to understand how humans should interact morally with AI humanoids. His research combines his rabbinic background in moral philosophy as well as his technical experience for 35 years as a computer design engineer. His teachings can be found at the website linked in the description, and I'd personally suggest checking out the Ethics and AI section. You can also click through on his site to his YouTube and other socials. So here's my chat with Morris. Enjoy. Really honoured to have you on the show, um, not least the fact that you are actually my first guest. Um, <laughs> is, okay. I, I've done three, three videos up until now, recording this on the 7th of August um, and of 2024, a, a significant time in our history. Um, and so I would love to start with the question of what's keeping you busy right now? Um, so what's keeping me busy is, you know, teaching and writing, um, giving presentations about ethics and AI and ethics in general. Um, you know, I, this is my third year teaching um, as a professor at Ben Gurion University, teaching engineers about ethics. And, and that's really a special kind of a niche because, you know, you're teaching people who need to know this stuff, who know absolutely nothing about it. And since I come from that world of engineering, so I can speak that language, even though, you know, I've also had this whole world of philosophy and ethics running in the background during my engineering career. And well, that, that, that's interesting. So th throughout your career, you've had this philosophy and ethics, of course, for those of you who are uninitiated into this ethics is, is a branch of philosophy. And so, but nonetheless, in modern times, we see it as a, as a, as a concept in and of itself, but how long, has this concept uh, been a focus in your life? So it's interesting. Um, you know, I always was interested in why are we here and how are we to live, right? The big questions of, of existentialism and, and ethics, and which, which are really one and the same, you know, because once you figure out why you're here, so then you also need to know how it is that you're supposed to be here. They, they, they're, they're basically um, synergistic, I would say. But in any case, um, I, to answer your question, I, I, like I said, I've been always been interested in why we're here and, and how we're supposed to live. Um, I, that question sort of became, came to the fore when I was about seven or eight years old and, and I found out that people die. And so that was when I said, well, so then what are we doing here? Um, I didn't really get an answer to that. And I went about my business, you know, and got a degree in, in computer engineering. And it wasn't until I started working in computer engineering that I met a guy who was an engineer and also had these kinds of, of philosophical questions that, that he tried to answer. And so the two of us, I mean, he basically was like my mentor, both in engineering and in what we could call philosophy, ethics, religion. It's interesting, isn't it? There's, there's a... Um... From a philosophical standpoint, there has always there's been a view for the last few thousand years, at least, of recorded history of this particular branch that is that there's kind of three parts of a stadium or three parts of an arena. There's the there's the man in the arena, uh, and uh, and to be more modern about it, it's the person in the the arena who's who's competing, and then there's the the crowd, the spectators who are who are cheering and and betting and uh, and all the other things. And then there's the third layer, which are the people in the arena who are wondering why why any of it is happening. Uh, what, what, <laughs> what what is the purpose of of it all? And uh, and that's I think some of us find that path uh, naturally through the questioning of why people die or why am I alive or um, but some of us maybe arrive at it in a later stage where there's been a, a more adult um, pivotal moment, maybe a near death experience or maybe a divorce or maybe a, mm. or something that, that ha or maybe witnessing an atrocity, um, uh, political or, or uh, somewhat socio-political um, atrocity of some sort that, that, that makes people wonder why. Um, and, and so, you evidently have a crossover between your professional and personal life of this topic. And has that ever been, I, I would say this with a slight grin on my face, because the, the reason I want to ask this question is because the answer, the answer I would give is absolutely unequivocally yes to this next question. <laughs> um, 
has there ever been um, any challenges in your personal or professional life due to your ethical approach? <laughs> so, you know, I'm not sure I can give such an unequivocal yes. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that, you know, ethics is about trying to do the right thing and i believe that in general people want to do the right thing um i think that it often comes to to some kind of tension um when when different people think that you're you know you have a disagreement about what is the right thing to do but in an everyday kind of um life that really comes to the fore, I think, more in religion. So I don't make a big distinction between religion and ethics in the sense that religion has always provided the, the ethical direction. It wasn't only until the Enlightenment and with Kant that started trying to define right and wrong from reason as opposed to from divine will. Um, otherwise, really, religion is supposed to try to guide us as to what is right and what is wrong. But then when you bring in religion, so then people start getting a little bit hot about, you know, what is what, you know, who are you to tell me and so forth and things like that. But yeah. in ethics in general, um, I haven't, you know, I, I haven't really run into so, any great tensions. Um, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the, I guess there's the in that crossover, there's the, the if if one person thinks something is right and the other person thinks a different type is right is right, then we have this kind of ultimate right argument. Yeah. And uh, without being partisan here in any way, bearing in mind we're in the year of the US presidential election, if I, the more I say the word right, people will think that I'm some form of uh, some form of other othering. Um, but I I'm fascinated by in and and specifically around your work with engineers. Whether you feel that from an engineer's, um, if we were to generalize um, only for this one particular con in this one particular context, would you say that as as engineers there is a shift more toward, or at least a demand toward, the understanding of an ethical approach, or is there has there been um, a historic and and present? general uh, misunderstanding or or lack of understanding of ethical principles in engineering. So that's really very interesting. Um, look, I've worked in engineering for for three over 35 years. And really, ethics wasn't um, an issue. You know, you the, what was an issue was designing a system so that it works functionally according to the specifications. It's only now with when when um, I, we start working on life and death machines, like for example, an autonomous vehicle, that all of a sudden ethics comes into play and there's certain safety standards at a minimum and and all of a sudden engineers have to start thinking about things which are not just functional or or the other way that ethics becomes part of the functional specification um and so and 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 that's really i think spread into all of of artificial intelligence and ai applications that 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 are now bringing to the fore all of these ethical issues. And so, you know, what's interesting is that it's become very, very much uh, an important element of, of, of engineering itself, which mm -hmm. it wasn't. There, you know, there, there was, I mean, if somebody told me when I learned, when I started at UCLA in, in the 1980s that you have to take an ethics class, I'm like, well, why? Like, what, is, what does that have to do with hunting? I mean, you know, like I said, personally, I'm interested in that, but the, what does that have to do with my degree in engineering? Mm -hmm. But, but you know, now, slowly, slowly, schools are beginning to take that on. And like I said, at Ben Gurion University, I mean, I'm teaching a required course. It's part of the engineering degree that, yeah, that, yeah so like I have, you know, 100, 180, 200 students, um, that have to pass this class huh. to get their degree. Huh. I did not know that. And that warms yeah. my heart because, well, obviously, I mean, <laughs> I would say that, but also, I mean, it genuinely, I, you know, I was going to ask you what you see the next decade playing out like in, in, um, in, in, in society in general, but engineering and technology and specifically, but I have an adjacent or rather precursor question for that, which is, do you feel that the state of play we're in at the moment, or let's say the state of the market, let's say 
where technology is, is a direct result of a lack of ethics in original engineering courses. And that then obviously is a precursor to, does that mean that if we could make a correlation, the future of technology is likely to be more ethical? Um, you know, it's hard to say that, that, you know, we were, that we were unethical as engineers. I mean, you know, I designed all kinds of different systems, whether it was, uh, the, the star Wars system to defend America against Russian missiles. I mean, we were trying to do develop, build a defensive system, um, or it was making, you know, I, I developed, uh, the, the first video on demand system for airplanes that, you know, you watch movies on, on your airplane. So that I was, I designed the first system, but you know, the, the, there was no like ethics involved. I mean, we tried to make a system that would work efficiently and and be you know commercially viable, etc. Um, and there, so there wasn't something that was unethical, right? Uh, I think that, like I said, today artificial intelligence is getting into every nook and cranny of our lives, and there's. And so there's a lot more going on. Um, there's a whole issue of surveillance. There's a whole issue of manipulation. There's there's the, there's um, all kinds of issues of you know balancing security versus privacy of of um, how we interact with with chat GPT that talks to us like a person. And so, you know, can we give it orders or should we say please and thank you because it it's like a person to us. So all of these kinds of questions are things that I deal with in my course and they are definitely very important. You know, they're, they're part of the functionality that 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 users, as it were, come into into contact with, and mm. which is I mean, I'm sure we can dig up these kinds of ethical issues in previous engineering, but now it's become very blatant. Mm. And uh, and so like, you know, your question about how, where do I see that in the next 10 years? I mean, you know, it's very hard to predict 10 years, especially in terms of, of, of engineering technology development. But I mean, standing where we are today, uh, ethics has definitely become very important. Um, e even from a commercial basis, you know, the, the people want to know that it's being taken into account mm. and that somebody's tr thinking about these things. Mm. And um, so it's not the Wild West of the, it, you know, initially of, of when Internet came about and everybody just went and did whatever they wanted. And, and you know, that development definitely um, was a bit problematic in terms of data and data collection and data use and, and again, and ideas of surveillance and manipulation. Mm. Fascinating. Well, I, yeah, I, I must admit, I've, what I've, what I've learned from this chat is that there is there is more of a requirement it has now become more mandatory the inclusion and prior to this chat i was perhaps too um pessimistic about that um the 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 mandatory inclusion part is a is a real eye opener for me um so i was ignorant on that point and and i think the second one is that indeed it is that of the moment that the inclusion is more uh, needed rather than it being that there was a lack of it beforehand. Beforehand, if you're making a, an on-demand video system that probably wasn't connected to the internet, therefore isn't a communication tool, therefore <clears throat> isn't necessarily even a media device that could be censored, therefore we kind of eliminate the whole ethical censoring question uh, the communication preference part, we therefore possibly eliminate what is now GDPR requirements. And so, so I can actually say another learning from this call is that, that it is, it is because of the way that things are now that it is becoming more inclusive in included as mandatory. Um, so this Correct. is real eye opener. I mean, that's the sort of the way I see it from, you know, my background and my experience, uh, you know, like I said, that that uh, there's always ethical issues, but today they're very they're part and parcel of of every new development. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so that well, keep flying the flag. You know, we're doing exactly what you're doing because I think that the more the more people, if every single professor of engineering of any kind in every single university was was on this path, then then 
I believe that my children have a have a yeah. future. <laughs> yeah. No, and there, there's definitely um, a lot of work being done. Stanford has their whole unit um, that works on the ethics of AI and, and various universities around uh, the United States and really in the world. It's, it's slowly becoming a, a, a significant field. Well, uh, what a fitting first guest then. And that's, that, that's, uh, that, that, that was, the, why, why would you not have been the first guest? It's uh... <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Thank you, Maurice. I appreciate your time and I'll put all your information, contact details in the d description for anyone watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be with you. Cheers.